Hello everyone, this is Enea here, and in today's tutorial I'll teach you how to create this Celtic Lovers Knot in Affinity Designer. This knot is made of four interlaced hearts and represents a deeper bond and commitment between two people. Alright, so to get started we go to File New and we create a new composition. We give it 2000 by 2000 pixels in dimensions and we click on Create. And then we make sure that snapping, snap to spread, snap to object bounding boxes and include bounding box midpoints are enabled. And then we're going to add an horizontal center guide. So we go to View Guides and we add an horizontal center guide. And then we're going to start drawing the figure. So we take the rectangle tool, we set the fill to None, we leave the stroke as black, and we set the stroke width to 30 points. And then, starting from the middle of the composition, and while holding Ctrl and Shift to expand from the center and keep the one-to-one -one proportions, we go ahead and we create a square of around 850 pixels in dimensions. And then we take the Move tool, we select it. So we are going to give it sharp corners, so we go to the Stroke panel, and we set Join to Meter Join. And then we're going to create the hearts that go in and out of it. So we take the rounded rectangle tool. We'll leave the fill and stroke settings as they are. And we increase the roundedness of the corners to 100%. And then we go ahead and we create a rounded rectangle. We select it with the move tool. We center it vertically. And then we position it in such a way that its lower extremity matches the lower extremity of the square. And then we make it a bit bigger, so that it lies slightly underneath the horizontal guide. And then we scale it up while holding Ctrl, so that we scale it up both on its left and right side. Until its rounded part lies fully outside of the square. So now it must be positioned like this. And then we press on Ctrl J to duplicate it. And we move the duplicated rectangle upwards until its top extremity matches the top extremity of the square. So now it should be positioned like this. And then we select both rounded rectangles while holding Shift. We go here to enable Transform Origin to have the rotation center in the middle of the composition. We press on Ctrl J to duplicate them. And then we rotate the duplicated rectangles by 90 degrees. So now we have all the elements that we need to complete the figure. We press on Ctrl A to select all the elements and we are going to rotate them by 45 degrees. So we add 45 degrees to the figure in the transform panel. So now it should be positioned like this. And then we press on Ctrl A to select all the elements. We go to Layer, Expand Stroke. So what this does is that it converts the stroke object into fill, so now the objects are fill only. We need to do this before we start using the Shape Builder tool. And then we press Escape, we go to the Color panel. We set the stroke to None and the fill to Black. We also need to do this before we start connecting the object with the Shape Builder tool. Otherwise the program is going to add a stroke. And then we press Ctrl A to select all the elements. We take the Shape Builder tool. We set the Action to Minus and the Cleanup to None. We are going to start by removing the parts that we don't need. So we remove the intersection of both rounded rectangles here in the center. And then we switch the action to plus. We are going to start by connecting the elements here, the elements here, and the elements here. And then we connect the elements here, the elements here and the elements here. And then we connect the elements here, the elements here, and the elements here. 
and then we connect the elements here, the elements here, and the elements here. All right, so now we connected all the parts of the figure that we need connected together. The next step is going to be to create the gaps between the elements. So we take the contour tool, we leave the contour type to round, and we are going to diminish the radius by minus five. And as you can see, this creates the gaps between the elements of the figure. And lastly, if we want, we can give the figure a bit of color. So I'll set the fill color to a dark green and also give it a bit of noise. All right, so that was it for this tutorial. You learned how to create the Celtic Lover's Knot in Affinity Designer. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something from it. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe for more Affinity Designer tutorials in the future. And until then, see you next time. Bye.